When applying effects to clips here inside the editor panel, you have a different view that you can use. It's called the Preview Editor. And the Preview Editor has several features that are not available here inside the Standard View. You can also use the Preview Editor when you're making trims, like trimming away the beginning or the end of a clip, or parts of a clip here in the middle. If you want to follow along, just double click here and go to Working Files, Noises, and get the Noises Music file. Back up a notch, go to Narrations, and get the Gettysburg Unedited file. Back up a notch again, go to Music. But adjust too hard to find, and then scroll on down and get the instrumental mix and bring that in. This first clip is my narration of the Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago. What I want to do here is trim away the beginning and the end, and then one of these little pauses here. I'm going to do that inside the preview editor. To access the preview editor, I go to this little button in the upper right hand corner there and click on that. Now, the original inspiration for the preview editor were three effects that changed the duration of the clip as you work on them. Basically, as you change the pitch, it changes the duration because as pitch goes up, the duration shortens. As pitch goes down, the duration lengthens. So they needed a view that showed the original length and the edited length down here. But you can also use the preview editor for other purposes. So I'm going to show you that in just a second. But before we do that, let's just take a little tour here. There are three different views, and you access those views from the zoom drop-down list. Right now we're in the mirrored view. If you change this, for example, change the zoom factor, it changes it in both of them equally. Slide this to the right. It slides to the right and the bottom. I can slide this to the left and the bottom, and it slides it to the left on top. Same thing like that. Wherever we go, it's always the same. If I make a selection here, the selection shows up down here. I'm going to change from mirrored to independent. If I zoom in on top, it does not zoom in on the bottom, and vice versa, like so. Move it around independently. The thing is, when you're working in these views, the keyboard shortcuts you'd expect to see in both of them apply only to the top one. So I press the plus key to zoom in. It affects only the top. The hyphen key or the minus key to zoom out like that, same thing. If I press the home key, it goes to the home and also shifts the view so you can see the playhead right there at the beginning, but it does not show you the playhead down here. You've got to move to go see that. If I press the end key, it goes to the end up here again. It doesn't go to the end here. You've got to move to see that. So keyboard shortcuts work only up here. That's by design. All right, one more view here, the zoom to selection mode. Let's say I select this area here, and it zooms into that selection down here. We can work on this thing more readily down here now that we're zoomed in. If I make a selection here, it zooms into that selection as well. Now I'm going to zoom out from both of them, like so, and change the view back to the mirrored view, which is the standard view, and turn off that selection. Let's trim away the beginning and the end. So to do that, I'm going to take my current time indicator to the beginning. And the normal way would be to zoom in on this thing and trim, and then zoom in the end and trim there. But I can zoom in on this one down here and work on it independently of this one. So we'll switch over to the independent view. I'm going to zoom in on this guy quite a bit, like so. Go to the beginning and trim away the beginning. About there, I think, would be a good place to trim. So I just select that, press the delete key. Now I trim that away. Very simple. And go to the end now. Same routine. Trim this away. Select that, press delete. And we've now done that trim without having to zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out up here. It's very slick. Now I want to do is trim away this pause here. So I'm going to select that and zoom to that selection. So I'm going to change this view to zoom to selection. Going to make the selection larger than the gap, like so. Then that whole selection will show up down here. I can click away to get rid of the selection. I can work here like this. Detract. That's a good place to start this little trim. So I'm going to press the M for marker to put a marker key there. Go here, a little farther in the world. So I'm going to just back up a bit here and put a marker there as well. Now I've marked the in and the out, so I'll just select that. You can see the selection showing up both places and also zooming to the selection down here. Press the delete key, and you see the edit happening up here, and now we've got that pause removed or detract. The world will look. So there you go, that takes care of that. So that's how you can use the preview editor to do some basic trims and some deletions like that. I'm going to go back to the standard view like so. I'm going to change to a different file, double click on this instrumental mix wave here. What I'm going to do now is apply an effect that this preview editor was originally intended to work with. So I go up to effects, I go down to time and pitch, and the pitch bender and the stretch and pitch are two of those effects. The third one was this Doppler shifter. So we're going to work with the pitch bender here. This pitch bender puts this little blue line here, which I'm going to explain in more detail when I do a separate lesson on the pitch bender. But for now, I want to add a bunch of keyframes and then show you what happens. But before I do that, I want to add some markers to show you something else that happens when we change the duration. So we go here, right to about 10 seconds, and put a marker there by pressing the M key. Go to about 20 seconds. Press the M key again. I've got two markers. Notice they show up here and here. I'm going to change this view down here to mirrored. So they're lining up like that. 
Now I'm going to change the duration of this clip on top and see what happens down here. So I'm going to put some keyframes here, four of them. One, two, three, four. I'm going to change the pitch here. I'm going to increase the pitch. So I'm going to change this thing from 48 semitones to 12. So we change it just one octave. Take you up there one octave like that. Take you up another octave like that. Get these guys so they jump right from the original pitch to an octave above there. I'll just play this for a second so you get a chance to see what that sounds like. Suddenly it plays faster. So in that 10 second section there, that has now been changed to five seconds because we doubled the pitch. We went up an octave. And so that means we cut the time in half. And you see that showing up down here. Here now the markers are at 10 and 15 seconds instead of 10 and 20. It's important to notice this. The markers are not related to the time in the timeline there. They're related to the position inside the clip. When you apply markers in the multi-track session, they're related to time, but here they relate to the clip itself. So when we change the duration of the clip, the marker slid over accordingly. Let me just play this again. Watch this guy as it goes along. It's going to go along much faster than this guy down here, basically twice as fast. That's why we have this preview mode, so we can see how this is going to end up, because this is the real time version of it. This is just the one as we're working on it. So that's how you work with that guy. Let me close this guy down. Let's change over to this music noises. What I want to do here is show you how an effect can change things before we actually apply the effect. So I'm going to change the view to the spectral frequency display. Over here at the end, we've got the cell phone ringing. I want to be able to remove that sound. I'm going to talk about how you remove sounds in a couple of separate lessons, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of a preview here. Let me zoom in on that area by pressing the plus key a few times. I'm going to then select these things and tell Audition these are things we want to get rid of. And then we're going to open up the preview mode to see how that works. Select them using the paintbrush tool here like that. I'm going to go along here and make a rough selection, just kind of dragging along and selecting that. Hold on the shift key to continue making a selection here to add to that. And then I'm going to teach Audition what that noise is. Go to Effects, go down to Noise Reduction Restoration, and go down to Sound Remover. This is a new effect in the latest version of Audition. Click on that. And it changed to this preview mode here. And it automatically applied the change. Now you can't see it down here yet, but it has. I'm going to show you how it has by just clicking away here for a second. Now you can see that that telephone is gone. That little tone right there, even to the left here, which we didn't select, has been removed. But that's just in the preview mode. You can see down here it's gone. This one here stays because it's a different sound. But that sound there, which you can see showing up here in the spectral frequency display, is now gone. I'm going to make a selection here so we can just work on that one little section, like so. Now I'm going to preview this by just clicking this little play button there. So you can hear that that telephone noise is virtually gone. We can change the model here if we want to. We have high noise complexity. We can change it to something else like high content complexity. It'll do another preview here. Let's try that again. Barely hear it in the background. There's still a little bit of it left over. You can also change this mother models here, change these controls, and you can see the difference here. I'm going to take one here that doesn't work very well. I'm going to go to, let's say, maximum. Try that. And you can see that the little signal was not removed that well under the maximum setting. You can just see that. You don't really need to play it. You know for sure that that didn't work. So that's really a cool thing. You can see how well things are working just by looking here inside the spectral frequency display inside the preview editor. So there you have it. Several different ways that you can use the preview editor to your advantage.